Hello, everyone. I'm Mayor Kennedy O'Brien of Saraville, and I want to welcome you to Conversations with Kennedy. I'm Kennedy O'Brien. I'm the mayor of Saraville, New Jersey, and this is uh, our first of our podcast called Conversations with Kennedy. And today I have with me the Iman of the Saravel Muslim community, and he is. Uh, I think I think it's a good choice of my first guest because we are in the month of the Muslim Heritage Month, which is the month of January, and I think it's it's a good time for us to get to know our neighbors who have been here for a considerable amount of time. So, Iman, with that, I thank you very much on behalf of the forty-five thousand people of Saravel for coming here today. And I'm going to sit back, listen, and learn. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. It's uh, a real pleasure for me to be here. Um, I've been looking forward for this conversation since we have spoken uh, a couple of weeks ago. Um, but I would like to begin, first of all, with the word of, of God um, as an opening. And I will do both the Arabic and the English. So it goes like this. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. In the name of God, most gracious, most merciful. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Praises and thanks to God Almighty. Uh, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. He is the most merciful, most rewarding. Maliki Yawmiddin. He is the owner of the Day of Judgment. Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'in. We as individuals, we seek, we only worship him, and we serve him, one and only God, and we seek his help. <inaudible> so we ask him to guide us onto the straight path. The path of the ones that who are blessed and not the people of anger and not the ones who completely went astray. So I would like to begin with that. Beautiful prayer. Thank you very much, Eva. And uh, Mr. Mayor, I would like to take this opportunity, uh, uh, being the first podcast also, to congratulate you on your mayorship. You have served this community of Saraville for so many years and you have taken a break because of genuine situation, and lo and behold, you're back to lead this community. So Thank you. We, we really appreciate your service here um, in Serville, the community of Serville. Thank you. I am, my name is Nazimul. I am the religious director and imam at uh, Masjid Sadr and Community Center, which is uh, right on 216 Ernston Road in Parlin. Um, this community is pretty young um, because there have been many, uh, many, many Muslims in this community for many years, and they have been worshiping in different in different city. And so, we have thought that it is a wonderful opportunity to have the Muslim community uh, something of their own that they can they can have. And so, therefore, uh, the effort was made to establish an Islamic center um, within Saraville itself that will serve uh, a very large uh, Muslim population. And I don't know if you are aware, Mr. Mir, that the Saraville Muslims are mostly a uh, highly racially diverse community, very much. It's a diverse community, and they come from vast number of countries. Uh, I think possibly with your interaction with many of them, you would hear different accent and, you know, and I'm sure you have met many of the Muslims also in Saraville. Is that so, Mayor? Over the years. I, I, have, I have a number that are my neighbors. Fantastic. And so the Muslims in Saraville, approximately three, five, about 3.5% of the population, which is close to about 1,600 Muslims within Saraville itself. And the, the historical account, basically, specific, uh, specifically focusing on Muslim community in Serville, are, are not something that are readily available. I just tried to put this together so the wider community could understand 
um, the, the Muslim presence in Saraville itself. Many of them are professionals, um, a lot of professionals. We have a lot of young people who, with our intention, starting this Islamic center, that can provide an opportunity for them, to provide a space for them, a space that can say, this is my own. So rather than them being in the street, they have a home that they can come to for religious worship. And this is something that is encouraged. When we look historically in religion, you know, uh, with all the other religious community, this is something that we have seen. And we have seen that prophets did all of these things. Prophet like Prophet Jesus and Abraham and Moses and Muhammad, who are all uh, brothers together, may peace and blessings of God be on them all. They, they call people to, to the worship of God. And when someone is in a state of worship, then he would think, you know, he would think 101 times to do something that's wrong. You understand what I'm saying, Mayor? A hundred percent. And so that's the idea of keeping these young people. We have a large population of young people. Um, they're all in high school and middle school, and we have a number of them in college. Very soon, a lot of them will be graduating. Uh, we have a program that is called uh, Young Muslims. They reach every Friday, and it goes to about uh, you know uh, 75 to 125 of them. Uh, you see young people coming together, um, breaking bread together, uh, you know, with this fraternity and brotherhood and love and relationship, learning how to behave towards their, their family, their parents, the elders of the community, and to be a source of giving to in the community itself. This is so important for us to cater for them. This is 100% uh, what any mayor can hope for. I have been in every house of worship as a guest yeah. um, in Saraville, Um and I always find a house of worship is a blessing. Uh, when my when my only son was in college and he was learning different things, and some of the, he he would test his father. He would test me, and he would ask me the reason for religion. And the easiest one that I could give him, I said, "Government will tell you what's legal and yeah. illegal." I said, religion will teach you what's right and what's wrong. Absolutely. And I said, there's a big difference. Absolutely. So w the more houses of worship, I find the more stable the community and, and the more active those houses of worship are. And what, what they teach, particularly the young people, is a tremendous benefit. So on behalf of Saraville and all the people that live here, I welcome you and... We're anxious to learn more about our, our neighbors. And I can't say new neighbors yeah. because you've been here the, well over 30 years. Yes. Uh, and and you're probably multi-generational now, yeah. which is always good for a community. They take pride in that. Yes. And apart from the prayer service that we provide for the people of the community, we have educational programs. Mm -hmm. Educational programs are not only religious education that we do. We do education in terms of uh, SATs programs, helping them in their high school, uh, he helping them in selection of their, um, their college and stuff like that. Yeah. Because young people need this guidance, so we provide that opportunity. Um, we have weekend school um, that they come to. A lot of the young kids you know, have over 75 to 80 kids come on the weekend to learn about Islam. Um, we have also established charitable activities, like uh, you know, on certain events during um, the uh, Thanksgiving, we distribute stuff to the neighbors. We we give turkeys, you know, to those who are in need and stuff like that. So it's a, it's an opportunity that this is even something we can even work with the city to to involve in charity. Iman, I'm glad you asked. I'm glad you made that offer to me. One of the things that I have failed at as mayor is we have many people that are senior citizens, yes. and we have an awful lot of widows. Their husbands had passed on. And when it snows, we have a shortage of young men going around with shovels looking to shovel. Yeah. All, and it's not for free. Um, so if you wish to discuss it with your young people, 
Uh, I know at, at our senior center, we can we can put down the names of young high school boys mostly because yes. you need that upper body strength. Who would who would be inter- and and not for free? I, I, you know, nobody should work for free. And nor do these uh, seniors. And I'm a senior. I'm 70 years old. And I'm going to give you my home address because each year I wait for a young guy to come by and say, I'd like to, you know, for X amount of dollars, I'll shovel your snow. And my Absolutely. wife will say, help the old guy out. Shovel the I snow. I mean, look, our seniors are the ones who take care of us. In return, we should give back. And this is a wonderful opportunity. I would definitely raise this with the young the young um, guys in the community to to see how we can able to uh, figure out some way to give back to the community, and this is a fantastic way to do so. Well, even if they do it in their own if they, in their own neighborhood, their own street, if if there are a couple of seniors that live there, um, I, I know it's very difficult to find. It, it, it's the most current thing because we had snow two days ago, a- yeah. and. Uh, it, it, it's something that I have failed at in yeah. getting young people to volunteer um, to go around to shovel out to seniors. So we have the educational program. We have the charitable program. Um, we also have an interfaith uh, community outreach where uh, you know we engage people from other religious backgrounds and have dialogues and try to understand each other's religion because I feel... Uh, Understanding each other, appreciating each other, it's a way of moving forward. If if I don't know who you are, I would always suspect you, right? Because the, you see, humans are like that. Correct. They, they, they become suspicious about their brothers and they're suspicious about their neighbors if they don't know of each other. Correct. And so we are very much involved in the interfaith dialogue. Um, we have counseling service. I mean, I personally have done many counseling service for many families, for young people. Um, we are all now trying to set up a mental health uh, session um, because you would know since COVID, you know, people really shaken up. Yeah, have really shaken up. And um, we have seen the, the, the results of, of COVID, not only within that period of time, but it really moves on. So the mental health issue is real, and are I, you seeing more of it in the faith? It's everywhere. It's everywhere. A mental health issue is not something that we sh- can put on the back burner, and and this is a un- wonderful opportunity for the the city even to create a department to have professional, I mean, counselors who are available for people of the community who need them you know, when they're going through the spirit. So we have uh, counseling uh, support services um, where we, we talk to a lot of young people, a lot of families. Uh, families are going through very difficult times. And you see... Is it, is, it, is it recovering from COVID and the kids being home from uh, being homeschooled? Is it the disease? Did they lose loved yeah, ones or a combination of yeah, everything? Yes, that's that and more. It's, you know, like people never accustomed to be 24 hours together, a family. Okay. Husband goes to work, the wife, you know, she right. goes to work. So they ha- they spend a few hours. To spend 24 hours, you have to learn all over how right. you could maintain this relationship. And you, you start to find many families, uh, there are a lot of breakdown in many families because of this. People right. never know how to live You're for so long. you stress. Today. Yeah, S- stress. Um, fractures in yeah. the marriage. So, yeah, absolutely. And it starts affecting, fracturing the, uh, the, the fabric of yes. the community, which is marriage. Mag- marriage and family is a nucleus yes. of the community. If that is weak, trust me, right. we will be in trouble. So this is something that even from your office, that if something can be done, I can help in this way. As I promised you before, I am here to do whatever I can for the community. Not for the Muslim community, for all of Saraville, right? You. Because the center is not only for Muslims; it's for all of Saraville, you know, to help and to 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 protect them. We also involve in in uh, the celebration, um, the Islamic festivals, and you are very much aware. We have spoken about this. Um, you know, Ramadan is oh, coming yeah. up uh, in early March again, and where we fasted for you know a month, a month. Yes, you know. Um, 
followed what Jesus did for 40 uh, for 40 days and 40 nights but we, we you know he goes without food but we just go for from from dawn until sunset right. but this this is something that prophets did before um, and so part of our religion part of our belief um, our fundamental belief is fasting um, in the month of Ramadan which is coming up in March and um, at the end of uh, the breaking of Ramadan is we have a festival and we will look forward for having the community of Saraville to come Join because we celebrate in the park. Be happy to. And we're happy to have uh, our mayor and uh, to invite the community to come and see what's all about. So these are some of the activities that we are very much involved in. We are happy to get to, get to know you. And last but not least, the Muslim Heritage Month. Yes. Um, on behalf of the Muslim community of Saraville, on behalf of the Muslim community of all of New Jersey, we would like to take this opportunity in thanking, you know, uh, the governor's office to give us this uh, recognition of the Muslim Heritage Month every January. So there are programs that will be held. We um, uh, will be having a program at the Saraville War Memorial School, uh, High School, on January 31st, comm commemorating the Muslim Heritage Month. Um, is this during school hours or after school hours? Um, you know. I think it's going to be during school hours. Okay. I would have to so double check. So it's going to be education yet. for the... Yes, education. For the, children, for the students? Yes. No? Yes. Okay. yes. Okay. We, we're trying also to engage in local sure. libraries to... Excellent idea. To, to, to get Excellent this, idea. you know, the libraries, and we yep. talk about it. Um, yep. Because we need to know each other uh, what contribution we have made in, in New Jersey, in Cerebral, you know, and there has been a lot of contribution. Uh, several residents can definitely par participate in all of this, and we're looking forward for that. And um, before our conversation, uh, we started here at uh, the podcast, uh, we spoke about um, the proclamation. Uh, we would really love to have that proclamation of the... Uh, I am in the proclamation business. As thank a, you. As Fantastic. Matter of fact, you know. One of the things I really want to thank you about, now I, I have been very uh, involved in my own faith. I'm a Roman Catholic, and, and my parish is St. Stan's. <clears throat> but in, in, uh, I became mayor in 2000, and, and I had friends in the Asian Indian community. And so they, they asked me to join. They formed an organization called Asia, the Association of Cerebral Indian Americans. And culturally, I got to learn many things. Yeah. I didn't learn everything. One of the things I learned recently, since I became mayor this sixth time, was that there were problems. Their children faced certain harassment if due to their faith not being explained properly. And, and, you know, kids can be wonderful. They can be the true gift of God, and they can be a royal, royal, royal pain in the neck. Yeah. Um, and your, your discussion about mental health and, and about the children, I think this is the first step for a time where communication will dominate and, and kids will just have a better go at it. Look, young people, our children are gifts from God to us. Mm -hmm. And as you said, they can be a pain in the neck and they can be fantastic. But at the same time, many of us, you know, like immigrant parents, a lot of us are immigrant parents. But mm -hmm. when we come here, we, we are not able to, able to adapt the situation where our kids born and they grew up here. So they learn, they learn differently right. from their parents, right? Different from what they did in their home countries. And so they, there's a whole different psychology. And this is something I, I feel that we can talk about this later on. The psychology of dealing with young people yes. in today's modern society. That right. would not hit on your religion, but at the same time, it would incorporate religion and psychology of dealing with young people. Well, we're... we're by the way, everyone, we're, we're in a studio at the Cerebral Police Department. They, they put together uh, this studio for emergency services, and um, 
I have commandeered it with their permission uh, today to start the podcasting. A very special thanks to Lieutenant James Novak, who is our, our man in the booth. Um, but I, the chief is here, and I would, uh, you know, children are, are the present and the future. As I say to people, I'm the past and the present, and I'm getting things ready for those that are the present and the future. Fantastic. And this is a, a very important subject to me. So when our podcast is over, I would like you to spend time with the chief and, and just discuss sure. a number of ideas about Absolutely. this. Absolutely. Because um, we want the children to do well. Yeah. We want them to be safe. We want them to be happy, healthy, and we want them to do well. And we want their life in Cerebral to be memorable uh, and to be everything that a child could want. Thank you very much. So It's a pleasure being here, uh, oh. Mr. Mayor, and um, looking forward for future conversation because I feel that there are so many things uh, that you have in common of what we want to do, and we can just work together to, to see these things through uh, so that we can have a better community, uh, a more a loving society, a city, um, that we could bring up, you know, these young people as true citizen of this country and uh, the city right. of Sarah. Yeah, that's thank my goal. Thank you very much. Really do appreciate Even, it. I thank you for coming today, and, and I can guarantee you I will invite you a number of times to come back because we have a lot of, t a lot of things to discuss. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Eman. Thank you, guys.